Welcome to the Student Lawyer Podcast Series. My name is Camilla and I'm an LPC student and future trainee solicitor. Today on the Student Lawyer Podcast, I'm delighted to be joined by Yvonne Aquafore, a trainee solicitor at a fintech challenger bank. In this episode, we're going to be exploring Yvonne's career history and finding out how she secured a training contract in-house. In-house training contracts are quite difficult to come by from my understanding and don't seem to be as widely advertised or known about um, as private practice training contracts. I'm really excited to have Yvonne on the show to share her um, experience, discuss how she secured an in-house training contract. So without further ado, let's pass over to Yvonne. Welcome to the Student Lawyer Podcast, Yvonne. It's so great to have you here. Um, Yeah, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So let's get straight into the questions because I've got a few for you today. Um, Would you mind starting off by telling the listeners a little bit about your education and career background? Yeah, sure. So I did a law and business degree at Nottingham Trent University. And then following that, I did the LPC part time at the University of Law in Guildford. And whilst doing that part time, I worked in private practice for a year where I was doing commercial property work at a high street firm in Surrey, which is down near me. And then in the second year of that, I was actually working um, for Google just for a year. Um, And I was working in their commercial team, doing a few of their commercial contracts. And then that kind of finished, I kind of finished working there at the, that tied into the being the same time as I finished the LPC. And then following that, I then had a role at Amazon where I worked in their prime video legal team for a year and a half as a legal assistant. And then after that, I managed to secure a training contract where I am now um, and yeah I've been here for four months and that started at the very beginning of January. Brilliant well congratulations so much on starting your, con- um, your training contract and it sounds like you had some really great experience um, before you even did that so yeah you, it sounds like you've got amazing experience. Oh, thank you. So um, with so little information available to students about the uh, career path of you know in-house training contracts how did you actually manage to find out about and secure your in-house training contracts and where would you advise listeners um, to look for in-house opportunities yeah so I actually secured my training contract and my other two in-house roles I actually secured all of them via LinkedIn um, so actually yeah I actually didn't kind of secure any roles kind of looking anywhere else it all of them were sort of advertised on LinkedIn and my training contract I think that was really only posted for about a week um before they caught, sort of took it down because as you said in-house training contracts are really rare and I feel like as soon as something like that goes up you know it is just sort of flooded with applicants um so yeah that was posted to LinkedIn I saw the I saw the opportunity I applied for it and they came back to me within a few weeks and then they started putting me through the um, interview process um, which took roughly I'd say about a month maybe maybe four to four to five weeks I'd say maximum five weeks they sort of put me through that process and then yeah that was it I was sort of offered the training contract and it was all very kind of a fast turnaround time I think I was offered that in November and it was to start in January um, so they really were only kind of looking for a student that had already done the LPC. But I think opportunities will be different. There's definitely, you know, training contract opportunities that, you know, do start a bit like private practice, do start in like years to come. So it does give people time to kind of do the LPC. But I've also seen, you know, a few other opportunities, not just this one, but other opportunities where they are looking for someone to start immediately. And I think that's really important for people who maybe are kind of wondering whether they should sort of dive in and you know do the LPC or the equivalent sort of SQE without sort of a sponsor I feel that um you know if I if I hadn't done that then maybe this opportunity would have come up and I wouldn't have been able to apply for it because I just wouldn't have been ready whereas actually you know I went ahead and I did do the LPC fair enough you know you do have to get the student loan and it wasn't you know funded by another law firm but actually if I hadn't really taken that jump then I, prob- I wouldn't be kind of in the position that I am in now. So I do think if you are sort of set on, you know, training and becoming a lawyer, then I, I would just say you should just go for it. Yeah, that's really good. And, and I think that uh, raises two quite important points, really. The power of LinkedIn, for sure. Yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess it just shows the importance of LinkedIn and maybe just, you know, setting up those alerts to make sure you, you get those um, job notifications sent straight through to you because, like you said, these jobs get flooded with applications. So I suppose you kind of need to get in there early. Um, but then, yeah, also you mentioned about 
deciding whether or not to do the LPC and, and how that really paid off for you. Um, and I think that, um, it, you know, it's a question that I always had in my mind, you know, should I do it? Should I wait? But, um, you know, it, it clearly does pay off and, and maybe specifically for in-house roles, perhaps, you know, that is the kind of way to do it. Um, yeah, I, I don't really know whether in-house um, businesses and, and, and legal departments sponsor for the LPC, but I suppose it yeah. depends, doesn't it? Yeah, I think it, it would kind of depend on the business. I feel like the people I know that have trained in-house, they've all been kind of in a similar position to me where they have already had like the LPC and then, you know, they've kind of found themselves in this situation and they've been like, oh, okay, you know, like we'll train you and we'll help you get there. But I wouldn't say that that's kind of the, that's the rule and then no in-house sort of training contracts do sponsor you. I just would say that I think it's very easy to kind of talk yourself out of doing the LPC or doing the, the new SQE because, oh, you don't have a training contract and, you know, you don't want to, people kind of see it as like, you know, put yourself in more debt and stuff like that. But actually, I do think all of those thoughts need to, you just kind of need to get that out of your mind and just think, right, if this is what I want to do, I'm just going to focus on it and I'm just, you know, I'm just going to sort of go for it. Um, so, yeah, I'd say that would be sort of like my main kind of like piece, piece of advice. Great. So um, what do you think then? I mean, I know you haven't done a training contract in a law firm, but what do you think the main differences would be training in-house and training in a law firm? Um, yeah, I think I can only really go off what my sort of like friends have said um, that are training in private practice. I'd say that I know in law firms you have more, than, more trainees start at one time, whereas it was only me. I was the only trainee that sort of started in this cohort. There is another trainee, but she kind of started just over a year ago now um, and she's sort of due to qualify soon because she'd been a paralegal there as well so that kind of took off some time so I'd say the main thing is that I um, yeah I'm the only one in my cohort the second thing I'd say is that where your clients are you know the business you're a lot closer to them and it's a lot more kind of hands-on and a lot more full-on you definitely get a lot more responsibility than what you may get in a private practice firm. And again, I think I'm just kind of basing that off discussions I've had with, you know, my other friends that work in private practice. Um, and it might be different if you're, you know, like a fourth seat trainee, maybe you do get more responsibility. But I think definitely as a first seat trainee, in comparison to a first seat trainee in a private practice firm, um, I definitely think that the experience I've had has been a lot more kind of hands on and I've been allowed to run with a lot more things compared to if I was sort of in private practice. Um, so say those are the two main things. I'd say another thing is that you hear, it's not really just kind of about the law, where you are working for a business. There's, there's a lot more to it in terms of, you know, company updates and like where the business kind of sees itself growing and like, you know, how things are going to look in like the next five or 10 years. You're a lot more kind of involved in that part as well as just kind of, delivering the legal advice because you are part of the bigger picture and then I think the another key thing and you know one of the main reasons I do like working in-house is that you do really see a project from start to finish from when you first give the legal advice to you know the end of the project you know the output whether it's to do with something going live on the website or you know launching like a new aspect of the business you really do actually kind of see that go from start to finish whereas I think that when you're in a law firm you might deliver advice just on like a certain part of the project but you won't necessarily be able to see it from the beginning to the end. Um, so yeah, I say those are the, those are the main things. That sounds like a really, really good experience. Um, and yeah, I really like the fact that you get, I wouldn't say like thrown in the, the deep end, but you really get to hit the ground running um, and really get involved in, in those projects. That sounds like a fantastic experience. Um, so I suppose we've touched on this a little bit, but what do you think the main benefits are for training in-house? Um, yeah, I thought, yeah, we kind of, we kind of have touched on that a little bit. I'd say the main benefits, definitely the amount of responsibility that you get. Um, I'd say, yeah, I say that's a key benefit because with all that responsibility, you're definitely able to learn a lot faster and you are just, you do just have to kind of like pick things up. Um, so I'd say that's the, that's sort of like the main thing. I think another thing is also, um, being able to sort of build up that personable like relationship with your like client like your clients because they are in the business and I know we are kind of like working remotely at the moment but even in like my past sort of legal assistant roles where you know you do see your clients as you sort of walk around the office you're really able to kind of build that personal relationship with them which I just don't necessarily know if you get that working in private practice unless you know you do kind of have a meeting with your client or you 
do kind of go out to lunch with your client whereas actually where your clients do you know maybe sit on the desk over there you are able to kind of you know be a lot more personable with them so yeah I'd say that's kind of a really key benefit but I I think it, it depends what works for you I'm quite like a I'm quite a chatty person and like to you know be around other people so I feel like the whole being in-house and being able to kind of build relationships with people that's a really key thing for me definitely yeah I suppose it all depends on your like you said your way of working like what you prefer like if you don't like you know if you want to take if you want to be working in like a large legal team with lots of different trainees then perhaps in-house isn't for you but if you want to take on more responsibility and get really involved with the client then then in-house potentially is would be better suited yeah definitely yeah okay so um it'd be really nice to talk about the recruitment process now because um yeah i just wondered what's it like for in-house training contracts is it similar to a law firm's recruitment process where you might have like an assessment center or yeah did you experience that or, or something different yeah i think that it's definitely unless you and again i can kind of only speak for you know where i'm training at the moment um but i think it's definitely a lot less it's a lot there's a lot more of a focus on what you can do and what you can deliver as opposed to I definitely felt like with assessment days um you have like the online tests which you know I'm sort I'm sure the analytics and stuff behind it there are like reasons behind it but they're not necessarily legal like legal focused and even when you get like a writing task they aren't necessarily legal focused and I can kind of understand it because there's people that might be doing that that you know haven't you know they haven't like done the gdl or like the lpc or stuff yet but i feel like definitely for an um, in-house training contract there was a lot more they there was a lot more kind of focus on knowledge and like what you can actually bring as opposed to you know having the a's and b's on paper and stuff like that there was a lot more focus on what you're able to deliver and what you're able to show us um so the first the first interview was kind of like a telephone interview and again it was quite practical um and kind of went you know in depth into my experience and i think that's why it was good to kind of have had all these all like other in-house roles because I think without them I wouldn't really have been able to bring much to the table or really been able to answer certain questions um and then following that telephone interview there was a face-to-face interview but you know virtual interview with COVID um and that was probably I that was maybe for about just just over an hour and that was kind of one-to-one there wasn't any sort of like group interview or group assessment anything like that it was just myself and you know two two other people in the legal team and then there was also a written task but again that written task was very kind of legal focused um, and you kind of had a set amount of time to do that and then talk through your answers after and you did to really be able to do that you did really like need to have the legal knowledge mm-hmm. uh, that isn't something that without legal experience you would have kind of just been able to sort of pick up whereas I think that you know when you do train in um, private practice I wouldn't necessarily say there's an expectation that you must have been a paralegal like you must definitely have legal knowledge other than you know maybe what you've got from your law degree um, but there's not really an expectation that you need to have had like loads of practical hands-on experience whereas I definitely think for this particular in-house role um, that I think they were looking for someone who was maybe able to come in and kind of take on a bit more um, and then following that I think there was I think there was another interview as well I think there was like a third interview and that was sort of the last one and that was a bit more um, that was a bit less practical and maybe a tiny bit more um, like personable um and then yeah that was it so i'd say it was i say it was about three stages wow yeah that sounds um it sounds very intense and it also <laughs> sounds yeah it like you said it sounds a little different from from private practice law firms especially i suppose the the, the big ones where they recruit lots of people uh, i think they re- mainly recruit 50 percent from law students 50 percent from non-law students approximately so I think the exercises, like you said, are geared up towards, um, yeah, less legal tasks and, and more kind of, um, yeah, commercial. I think they they would be classed as more commercial sort of tests. But but from your experience, it does sound like, like you said, getting the LPC would be would come in handy and and maybe having paralegal experience too. So yeah, it's interesting to um, learn about the difference. I I had no idea what what the recruitment process would be like. Um, and so obviously we're recording at a time where everyone's working from home and, and, um, yep, we're recording these podcasts remotely as well, whereas we used to do them in person. So I just wondered how, how has it been 
starting your training contract working from home um and do you have any advice for listeners who might be about to start their training contract remotely yeah uh, that's a really good question i i think it's it's actually definitely been a bit of a challenge and i think that's just because i've come to well i'm sort of like the only trainee sort kind of in this cohort um i've come to a brand new company and you're starting a you know a training contract you're like learning all the systems and you haven't met anybody um so i definitely think that was initially a challenge um i think my feet are definitely kind of like under the desk a bit more now um but you do kind of have that initial um yeah that initial kind of is is challenging because i think if you were in an office you would just maybe pop over there and like ask someone a question if you're unsure about something but when you're working remotely and you're not kind of surrounded by other people you could probably have that fear of oh i don't want i don't want to bother anyone or i don't want to like you know ask too many questions or stuff like that and i think if i was to give any advice i would say to people don't don't feel that way i would say treat it as if you were in the office like if you do have a question you know message people like ask questions i definitely kind of say you know make the extra effort to be chatty and to be more personable and to make more effort not even you know not, not even necessarily oh it like has to be about work and you have to only speak to someone if it, if it was about work you know feel free to kind of put the extra kind of half an hour in with someone just to catch up randomly because you know if you're in the office you would still ask people well how was your weekend what did you get up to what are you doing next week like you know what you're up to this you would still have those conversations which you just don't really initiate when you are working from home so I definitely say you know feel feel definitely go for it and kind of you know still put those like half an hour or 20 minutes in and i think if you are starting um as part of you know a cohort and there are maybe like eight other trainees starting and i think firms have probably implemented this already but i think having like you know a meeting like a weekly catch up with all of you would definitely be a good idea just to check in and see like how people are doing how their weeks going and you know can can anyone like lean on anyone else for help and stuff like that i definitely say kind of just keeping in regular contact with people as much as possible i think that's really good advice um and I can definitely echo some of the points that you said, like building relationships with people that you work with. Um, it's good because, you know, it's nice to, to be friends with the people you work with anyway, but from a perspective of actually learning, it does make it a lot easier when you've got that kind of personal sort of relationship to then um, you feel, I suppose, it feels less of a sort of, like a formal process trying to ask for help and I suppose it becomes more accessible so I think that's really great advice and what does a typical day look like for an in-house trainee if there is such a thing as a typical day um <laughs> yeah I don't think there is a thing as a, as a typical day because I think yeah I think every day can be very different um and I also think that depending on what kind of section of you know the depart what kind of section of the legal team you're sitting in your day can also look very different i think some areas of the bank are definitely more busy are definitely busier than other areas even though all areas are busy i think there's definitely a lot going on in a particular area maybe at different times of the year um but i think at the moment for the first four months there's been a lot of one-to-ones with them um, like my supervisor and solicitor just to you know see how i'm getting on with certain things um I've had like a lot of different types of agreements as well um so like different types of you know I've had like non-disclosure agreements and then different types of third party contracts and then I've had a lot of um research tasks as well um and I think research is probably um or I learned from my supervisor that research is kind of a very common um like trainee task so I've had a lot of research tasks just to you know things like oh there's this part of like there's this bit of legislation can you look that up and you know find out what it's about and like how that might impact the bank going forward um so i've had a lot of those types of tasks and it's definitely been it's it's de- i've definitely learned a lot in the last four months yeah and it goes so quickly as well i think where you're constantly busy it does just fly by like i can't really believe that i'm kind of sitting here saying that i'm four months into my training contract it feels like it was only yesterday that i was having my laptop delivered um to to start in a few days um so yeah i feel like it's very very busy very full on very hands on but with all of that it definitely means that you don't even though you don't really have time to stop you're definitely not overwhelmed and you know if you are then you can kind of like say that and communicate that but i also think that it's just a really good learning opportunity because there is just there's just so much going on that you are able to just take on like a, a lot of what's going on around you that's amazing and i i think it must be a really exciting time to work in fintech as well 
with the, the fact that it's you know so fast growing and, and the company that you're you're working with is also growing so it must be a really good opportunity for you to kind of learn um learn with everybody else because because i suppose they're still learning too so exactly, yeah 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 it sounds really exciting so finally our last question um if if you had one piece of advice for law students who are thinking about the in-house route what would that be um one piece of advice i would say you need to definitely show why why you want to work in-house i think it's very easy to or a lot of people can definitely say oh they're interested in in in-house but i think an interviewer is looking for like why you're interested and i think without kind of having done a lot of research and without having you know maybe done another in-house role somewhere else i think it would be difficult for you to be able to show that interest so if someone is set on going in-house i would definitely look for in-house paralegal opportunities because I think that will definitely demonstrate to the interviewer and, you know, your future team when it does come to, you know, trying to secure an in-house training contract that you are really interested in, you know, this is what you've done to show that you're interested and, you know, you'll be able to kind of show that actually you've had certain experiences and this is how you dealt with them and you're able to kind of pass that on and like that's how you're going to implement certain things here. So, yeah, definitely look for an in-house paralegal role, even if you are interested in in-house and you're kind of thinking, oh, but there's no in-house training contracts you know, things come up randomly. If you'd said to me a year ago that I was going to, you know, be here doing this training culture, I, w- I wouldn't have believed you for a second, especially not with the pandemic when mo- most, you know, most firms and stuff have kind of postponed their recruitment process. Um, so I wouldn't sort of be disheartened by the fact that, oh, there's not many of them. I think definitely, you know, be aware and be open to training in private practice. But if in-house is where you'd like to be, then given that you know that they're kind of rare opportunities and that a lot of people go for them, you definitely do need to think, right, what can I do to sort of stand out as a candidate? And that is, you know, kind of doing the further research and, you know, working for other in-house like companies as a paralegal and kind of gaining as much experience as you can. Brilliant. That sounds like really good advice. And from the experience that you've had with the interview process being so directly focused towards um, your legal experience, that definitely sounds like, like good advice. So yeah, great. I mean, that's the end of the podcast. Um, so thank you so much for, for joining us on the show. It's been great to have you Lovely. here. And it's been great to get your insight into the in-house, um, you know, training process, because as we said at the beginning, it, it's not widely known about. So, you know, hopefully this episode will go some way towards shedding a light on it and, and giving any of our listeners who are interested in the in-house route um yeah something to think about and something to sort of go away and work with now so yeah thank you to all the listeners for tuning in it's been um yeah it, this is our first video r- recording of a podcast so yeah this this is um definitely a new experience but um hopefully we're going to carry on recording the episodes and uploading them to youtube as well as um you can find us on spotify google podcasts and iTunes so make sure that you subscribe to all of our platforms to make sure you never miss an episode and if you've got any questions for us please do email hello at thestudentlawyer.com and if you have any questions for Yvonne um, I would uh, would you mind if they reached out directly to you? Yeah no of course please do yeah 100%. Fantastic so, so right, I'll, I'll leave the details in the description box um, and you can yeah, get, get in contact with any of us if you have any questions. Until next time, goodbye. Bye, see you later.